Mark asked us to play that. Yeah, that's my song. And he's, now you're jumping all over my song. I had no idea you'd play that song for me today. I had no idea you let really? me back in, Jonesy. It's just fabulous to be here. It's That's nice right, to see you again, Mark. I've missed you enormously. I have missed you a lot. We, I wish you'd Barry say. Barry Menlo a lot over oh. the, last, <laughs> the last few months, over the Christmas break. Mark Ferguson, Channel 7 News Reader, in case mm. you don't recognise the dulcet tones. Jones, you're a little threatened. What's I'm wrong? Not, no, I'm not threatened by Mark Ferguson in any way. He is here as a news reader. Mm. And, uh, and a and, good guy and, and a, a great smart, guy. interesting man who's got an eye on a story. Have you been following that story, by the way, just before we talk about what's coming up? Uh, Brian Williams from the NBC with his conflated story. I was listening to you tell the story on the way out here this morning. Unbelievable. Did Anything you, you'd like to confess to? Yeah. Uh, no, I have never been shot out of the sky, mm. ever. What about that time I beat you in that skate off in the car park? Ah, uh, see, here, here we go. The here roller we go. skate. I think you conflated that story. Unlike the Brian Williams situation, yeah. we have video of that. And mm. if anyone would like yeah. to go to YouTube, you can see me. Uh, can I say kicking your butt? <laughs> you can say in the car park uh, many years ago. Many years. We've ago. We've had two challenges. Uh, someone's won both. <laughs> <laughs> someone's won none. I don't think this is a forum for you to gloat and brag, but uh, Sunday night, the, and we missed out on the whole Lint Cafe thing uh, m in a media perspective because we were on holidays at the time. It was an incredible time, Mark, and I know that on Sunday night you're interviewing some of the survivors. We know enough of the story, but what will we... What more will we know from watching? Well, you will hear the story, because you're going to hear their story. Uh, they haven't had the chance to speak uh, at length before now. Uh, I've had the, uh, the privilege of speaking to three or four of them, uh, sitting down for a number of hours, going from start to finish, how they started their day, how they got to the cafe, why they were in that cafe that morning, and certainly what eventuated over the next horrific hours. Mm. So they'll get the chance to tell their story. Also, uh, we had these three cameras locked off in our newsroom, pointing directly into that. So you'll see that vision, and that is extraordinary vision for the very first time. I think the morning where we all woke up and heard about what had happened and the... the, the the confusion of the bullets going everywhere and lights flashing, terrifying. Do they all remember it the same way? Do they have a clear image of what happened? Well, it just depends on their own story. So one of the, one of the uh, people I speak to is John O'Brien, the 82-year-old. The he was the first to escape. Uh, so he was out of there just after 3 o'clock in the afternoon. His story is absolutely fascinating. He basically played possum with his age the whole time. He made out he was frail, he was weak. All the time he was setting himself up to escape. Uh, I speak with Ellie and Gian and they were the two lint workers that you saw running terrified about 5pm down through Martin mm. Place. Their escape story is compelling. Uh, how they helped each other, how they got out of there, uh, the bravery that it took for them to stand up uh, and put themselves in, in potentially in the line of fire to get out that door is incredible. And then certainly um, we speak to uh, those that were there when the police came in, when those stun grenades went off and when those bullets were fired, uh, including Marcia. Uh, Mel's done an amazing uh, interview with Marcia and she talks about being there at that time and lying next to Katrina Dawson just wow. a few feet away and being in that exact same spot uh, when sadly she lost her life. How are they all coping uh, post-siege? Some better than others, uh, some better than others. Certainly, I think those that were left in there to the very end uh, are struggling uh, with what they saw and with, with what they heard. Others uh, are doing fairly well. Uh, John, 82-year-old, uh, he's the number one tennis player in the world for his age. Really? Uh, fascinating guy. He went to Wimbledon, uh, got to the quarterfinals at Wimbledon way back in 1956, still playing on the, the tennis circuit. He is a very strong man, mentally very strong, and he went into that um, certainly working out how can I beat this guy? He had tactics from the very start. How can I win? And I think that's reflected in the sort of guy he is. Uh, Ellie, uh, that poor uh, lady that you saw collapsing at the front window, uh, she, she sort of slid down the plane of glass, uh, collapsing there. She very determined to go back and work. She'd only worked there for three days, wow. but she is very determined. She's hoping it opens again one day, and she's hoping she can return to that job. And then there are certainly others who are really struggling uh, emotionally mm. and, and mentally to get over this. Well, I hope they open up that cat. Cafe again. I read in the paper the other day they were thinking about, oh, we don't know what to do. They should. They should come back and open that. Come back bigger. I'll go there and get a coffee. We should all go and get a coffee mm -hmm. or hot chocolate. Mark, an incredible story. It's called Inside the Siege, the Untold Story. It's a documentary this Sunday at 6pm on Channel 7. Yep. Thank you. And you've got to come to our party of the decade, perhaps. That's, you should come along to that. Party of the decade? Yeah. I haven't heard about that. What's happening? What's... Well, <laughs> he's he's you know, joking. He's already responded to my RSVP. Oh, really? 
Yeah. You, you on RSVP again? <laughs> Handwritten it was <laughs> too, with a velvet pen. Tinder Thank RSVP, you, same thing. Don't let the door hit you on the bum on the way out. You said that last time.